the Olympic torch burns once again. It was lit this morning in Greece's ancient Olympia, just a little more than four months out from the beginning of the 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris. But for Canadian athletes, the ceremony, there it is from this morning, a ceremony of a very different kind may hold greater importance. With us this morning is David Shoemaker, CEO of the Canadian Olympic Committee. Good to have you here. Good morning, Emery. So the Canadian Olympic Committee, this must first of all make you very excited to see the torch being lit. It's fantastic to see we're 101 days out from Paris 2024. We've been waiting a long time for this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, here we go. Now we're underway. Yeah. The Canadian Olympic Committee and Paralympic Committee, they are asking for an increase of $104 million in funding for Canada's national sports organizations. These bodies govern amateur, govern amateur sports in the country. You want those included in the budget that is announced this afternoon. You said our NSOs are on the brink of crisis. Why are these additional funds needed to keep everything running? Yeah, well, thank you for your interest in this story. Because there's a story we want to tell, the story of our path to Paris 2024. And we feel like this is a story we have to tell. Mm -hmm. The Canadian Olympic Committee, the Canadian Paralympic Committee, we're not asking for any money for ourselves. We're asking for it for these 61 federally funded national sports organizations. Mm -hmm. They help put Olympians on the podium, help them pursue their dreams, their Olympic and Paralympic dreams. But yeah. they also set the programs and policies for all of sport across the country. And they are not doing very well. We commissioned Deloitte to do a study on a three-year look back and a five-year look forward. And what did they find? $134 million deficit in the aggregate. Um, and many were, will be forced to scale back these programs and policies, and that'll affect participation in sport. So it's from the playground to the podium that this affects Canadians, and we should all be concerned. So that money that you're asking for then, where will the chunk of it go? Will it go into emerging athletes, or will it be for our Olympians now? It'll go right across the spectrum. These are the organizations that have been tasked by the government to set these programs and policies on a national basis. Yeah. And they haven't had a funding increase since 2005. So they're going on 19 years with an increase. That's a whole couple generations of athletes, really, when you're looking at the age of Olympians. Right, and with the power of inflation, that's eroded their, their spending power by 50%. They're being asked to do way more with less. And this, this will impact, ultimately will impact people, jobs, mm -hmm. but also programs, so national programs for sport that gets our children involved in sport. And that really, to me, is an important matter that we should all really worry about. Um, I want to talk about the early athletes for just a moment, but directly, because we're looking ahead to Paris, mm -hmm. how will a lack of funding then affect our athletes that are heading there? Hopefully not at all. Okay. I, I, what, what I think has happened is that in the last couple of years, as this has intensified, mm -hmm. our national sports organizations have coalesced around the need to get to the high performance needs of Paris, and that's working well. We're going to see athletes like Damian Warner defend his decathlon, mm -hmm. decathlon gold or Penny Alexiak in the pool or breakout star Summer McIntosh, I yeah. think, introduce herself to the world. Um, it's post-Paris that I worry about. Okay. Uh, if Christian Freeland, well, she's going to be here tomorrow, mm -hmm. but if she was sitting where I am right now, what would you say to her? I'd say this is a magical investment that the Canadian government can make, probably the most efficient investment that, for example, the... Uh, physical inactivity costs the national health care system anywhere from five to nine billion dollars mm -hmm. uh, annually. A hundred million dollars to national sports can cure that. It can cure so many other things. Wellness can help introduce new Canadians to communities around the country. I think it's a magical investment and very efficient way to accomplish, excuse me, so many tools here in Canada. Uh, I'm going to let you take a drink of water, yeah. and while you do that, uh, I'm curious about uh, young athletes. What happens to these programs then if you don't receive this funding that you need? I think fewer Canadian kids playing sport, and then uh, over time, fewer Canadians involved in sport, and we're a sporting nation. Mm -hmm. we're, we take pride in this, but right now, for example, Australia's outspending us by double, Great Britain by triple. And that's not a good thing for the long-term health of the country. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that we don't put the same emphasis on spending for our athletes that those other nations I do? Don't, I don't know, and, but that's why I'm so important to me to get up here on the day that the budget's being tabled to tell this story because I think it's something very important that Canadians hear about. And you're big concerned about us falling behind on the national stage. Well, I'd be concerned about that too. I, yeah. I do think we're going to have a wonderful Olympic Games, perhaps yeah. one of our best ever, but I worry about the future. David, thanks so much for coming in today. Thanks, Emma. Good to have you here. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.